Um, I'm Diana Konecki of Konecki Associates and DKA Strategic Planning, the Konecki Group, CEO. Um, well, what I'd like to share with you today is some thoughts about um, ideas that I've discovered by, by trying different things. Um, one thing, though, is what I found out is it helps to keep a balance between um, what you do analytically versus what you do perceptually. Um, for example, um, this year I took some continuing education courses um, at UW um, as well as University of Phoenix. And um, well, at UW, what I did is I, this was the first time that I've taken a continuing edu education course at UW uh, since I graduated in 1987. And the point is, what I did was to um, have um, a balance. One course was in liberal arts, which was communications in small groups. Um, another course was in was basically in technology, computer science, um, and computer architecture. Although it was it, computer, the, the course was in computer science and technology, architecture is also a, a fusion of of the of basically the analytical and the and the perceptive because in architecture you test new ideas you see what you can do and basically you see um, some other things that you can do as well. Um, right now I'm sitting in front of Simmons Library in Kenosha where they're doing an uh, an architect uh, redoing the dome and it's it's interesting they're trying to keep the library in the classic style um, but yet. A, but yet keep it functional for the 21st century. Um, this is an important part of architecture. Um, I didn't realize it at first because what happened so, um, when I, with the old family homestead, when we had someone come to appraise it, we had someone who basically said, well, um, they appreciate that we kept the old family homestead um, in the architectural splendor that was originally designed and yet updated it for modern use. And this is why I'm glad to see like with Simmons Library. Um, architecture, there's some classic elements that, that pervade uh, different aspects of, of time and culture, and those should be preserved, and, as well as certain techniques in that. Um, the point is, what happens so with, with, with the techniques, so um, it's good to realize um, how to use new tools to, to augment the techniques and, and, and also to basically do, uh, do them better but yet keeps the same qualities and same standards that you that people are used to. Um, you should, I, I don't believe you should use technology just to basically have a tech, use, uh, develop something that is um, substandard in that. Um, and what I do is I sort of do it on different levels. I do it basically from a design and architecture standpoint, as in fashion design, um, different computer architecture, um, uh, basically building architecture, organizational architecture. Um, and the thing, the thing is, what happens? You need to keep a fusion. And you need to keep mind, body, and spirit because um, if you focus too much on one or the other, then you don't you don't really have a good approach. Um, for example, yesterday I was working I was working on one thing one thing on Lazarus, and I was trying a program and, and I actually got it to come together, and and by I was able to come up with a new um, architecture and style that actually uh, made it function better um, than it did before um, and also allow for um, running on different systems. But the thing is, what happens though, the, the most important part I, I, find, I found out is it's important to basically to keep a balance of what you're doing. Um, it's, I mean, being on the internet all the time is one thing, but you know, um, you should also make time for yourself and for your friends like that as well. And even though the world is interconnected um, more so than it has been, and it's considered a village, in a village you still have to maintain your identity. 
um, because in a village, um, it's easy for someone to get to lose identity um, because some some people may try to con may try to um, cause conflict because they can only make themselves feel better by um, making someone feel poorer. Um, but the thing is, uh, maintain your identity in a positive way, um, and you'll be able to succeed in, in different things. Uh, part of maintaining the identity is, is, is also um, realizing, realizing who you are and, and also liking who you are. Um, not, not that you become conceited, but that you, that, basi that basically you're not, you're not so much um, uh, thin-skinned that if someone says one comment, you're going to go into shock. Because um, the biggest test many people who are transgender run into is, is that people will try to test them. They'll try to say, well, uh, this person um, doesn't dr dress quite right, or this person is a little bit tall, or this person is this, or... Well, you could say that about anyone. Um, and what happens, um, and the thing is, you have to consider what is, what is the meaning of what they're saying? Um, the, the meaning of knowledge, what is the meaning of what they're saying? Are they saying that to be constructive? Are they saying that to be hurtful? Are they saying that to be damaging? Well, I mean, if, if someone's saying something to be damaging, um, you know, um, realize it's being said to be damaging and don't, don't let it get to you. Um, However, it doesn't mean that you have to turn your back and walk away and um, keep turning the other cheek. You, 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 have, a, you have a right to, to respond if someone's, if someone's putting you in fear and danger or, make, or making you, doing emotional abuse or verbal abuse. Um, um, you, you, have the, you have that right. Um, and the best way to do it is is they actually uh, is basically legal. You know what the laws are, and that's part of the reason why I, I work with Legal Shield um, is because they have helped me quite a bit in doing different things. And um, and what happens so um, with um, also I'm an agent for Legal Shield um, because I, I believe it's important that once people have the have the rights um, and have proper access to an attorney that um, many types of abuses that go on are mitigated or even reduced. Um, notice that I used the word mitigated. The reason why is because um, some things uh, can, be, can be hard to eliminate completely or it may take time, but mitigation is a first step. And it has to be realizing that it does, that you have to do this as a step-by process and do this as the best thing as as you as you can. The main thing is make sure make sure that you maintain a, a healthy mind, body, and spirit. If you're in an area where it's negative, don't stay there. Uh, move because what happens that's going to reduce your lifespan. And that was even mentioned on the talk on TED. Um, that. And the other thing is what happens with a lot. Of, one thing transgender people experience right away as well as others, but more, I think more so transgender people might experience it sooner, is um, when someone decides to basically live their true gender, people will come out and attack them because basically out of fear, um, out of hate, because they can't live fully, they, they may attack someone else who is living fully. Um, the hardest thing is, no matter how much negative you hear, is to realize is, is to not is to not listen to it and most importantly not believe it uh, because anyone if they hear too much negative can be made to believe anything um, and, um, and, and and can be broken. That's why what happens in negative environments. Excuse yourself. Find someplace else to go. Um, take a moment just to um, just to reflect and relax a little bit. Um, because one on Ted, there's one there's one person who was a former model, and and she was one of the first transgender models um, from the Philippines, and she she mentioned her struggles, and it's interesting what she mentioned though. The hardest part was that at one point people started attacking her, and she started to believe it, and that's that's a point that everyone has in their life. Um, it's important that to realize that. 
Although some people may try try that, um, have have the, remember have, you have your own will, you have your own identity to overcome. And also, some people try to misuse some um, religion, uh, re religion or faith, to try to to try to do that. I still call them the paper moon type people, based on the movie Paper Moon, where where hucksters use religion to take advantage of people during the Great Depression. Um, just realize that. I mean. Um, the thing is, because here's, here's the thing to consider. Um, if someone uses religion and, and tries to tries to attack someone, say, "Well, um, well, you're 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 not you're not following the, the precepts of such and such and such and such, and you should be harshly punished." Well, think of it this way: um, with the being that can create the universe, create the earth, create people, create animals. Would, would they be so fickle to act as as basically uh, of a temperament of a one-year-old child? One thing that, um, no. I mean, someone uh, being who has that, who has that brilliance, lived a long time, also has a great maturity. And you have to realize um, that basically part of that maturity is also exploring and living as, um, and living as, you, as you're supposed to live. Um, fully in that, and also the understanding that basically that there, that there is um, different things in nature that that come about. Um, when I saw um, one one thing on front line regarding ISIS, I mean I was appalled um, because again this is an example um, of the same tactics that are used by um, against different groups of people to try to get people who are who do live fully as transgender people or LGBT or others that are escaping from some sort of group control. Um, what it showed on Frontline was uh, escaping that ex escaping ISIS um, is that essentially what happens when they capture the village, um, they capture the women and children and then they hold them for hostage and sell them as slaves. Essentially they're breeders. And breeders being breeders um, are, is just as is just as immoral as it was, whether it's um, basically someone running a puppy mill or whether someone uh, in the in the past uh, breeding people for for servitude or, or or something else. I mean, even though they claim they justify um, the Islamic faith, they don't. Um, I know I know of many friends who are who are Muslim, and um, they don't. They don't act at all. They don't act at all like ISIS. They're glad to be in the United States. They're glad to live in the United States. Um, have 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 a support. Have the business. The daughter. Um, one of the happiest one. When mother told me was when her daughter was able to try for the cheerleading squad in high school. Now think now. And she is still she is still Muslim, but she is trying she is trying out for for cheerleading squad in high school in the United States. I mean that's that's wonderful. I I mean. And what happens? Um, there's there's certain things that um, you know, that that's why I'm saying is to watch out for because there are a lot of hucksters and tricksters out there who will try to do use different types of arguments. And the thing is to realize you have to realize who you are and also um, who your identity is and what and what your beliefs are. But don't let someone try to try to change. Trying to try to trick you, change you, or or even um, harass you, or verbal, or or abuse you into, into changing. If someone's doing has to do that, you just know it's not right. And, um, and and remember, anything anyone does that, you can always call the police department. Your older person, you can also call Lambda Legal. Um, also, um, like in Kenosha, Women and Children's Horizons um, for domestic abuse. For both men and women, because also uh, men are, have domestic abuse as well as women do, um, and what happens? Women, children's rights, and helps both, as many organizations do. And if you're transgender, also um, there's different there's different groups out of Parkside, um, the Women's Center, um, and, a, and a few other places. Um, one thing, though, in closing, um, in comparing. Um, Parkside um, with University of Phoenix. Um, the one thing though is, University of Phoenix. I still feel 
is more for, is more forward thinking as to transgender students and LGBT. Even though what some people may say that that Arizona is in a is in a red state, uh, Republican conservative state, but the thing is because of the um, uh, cult, Indian culture and the fusion of that with the people that live in Phoenix, um, they actually are farther ahead than than Midwestern states are. Midwestern states are still a few years behind, and um, they're, they're improving, but um, it's it's they still. That still is the biggest test because um, in some Western states, the only way LGBT are protected supporters of us are members of the Democratic Party. And I, for example, am a moderate Republican. And what happens, um, the Republican Party is, uh, was very happy, and many friends who are Democrats are very happy that I do keep independent thought. But um, but the thing is, you have to you have to realize that different parts of the different parts of the country are moving moving forward, but some are at different paces. Um, Wisconsin has moved forward in the last few years, but um, it did have a point in 2012 to about um, early this year that where a lot of harassment of LGBT people, especially bi and transgender people, did occur, Prim primarily due to people moving in. Uh, from Illinois, they were from different parts of ghetto areas, and they were doing it basically to try to influence the, the gang ac activities. Um, it's you no, know, it's one thing for people to move, but if, if they're going to bring you know uh, fear tactics or, or criminal activity like gang activities, I say to find maybe you should move back to move back to the South Side of Chicago or the West Side of Chicago. Um, well, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I can be contacted at Diana18 on Twitter and also on Facebook, Diana with one N, dot Konecki, um, on Facebook.